Hi, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how you can easily create 3D schematics of optical setups in Blender. We're going to focus on simplified schematics, where most optical components are illustrated as simple geometries rather than being drawn to match how they look in real life. Besides being aesthetically pleasing, these schematics are a really useful way to give an overview of an optical setup, and so you'll encounter them as publication figures quite a lot. To showcase how Blender is really good for this, I'll be partially recreating this graphic from a paper in Physical Review X from 2016 titled Compressively Characterizing High Dimensional Entangled States with Complementary Random Filtering. I actually came across an old tweet asking what software could be used to create this figure, so I thought this one would be a good one to try. You'll notice that common components like the lenses, mirrors and prisms only require primitive geometries, such as cylinders and cubes. Components like the laser, the detectors, and the spatial light modulator do require some modelling, but once you've constructed them once, you can reuse them for future illustrations. To make this process as easy as possible, I've created a pack with several common optical components, which you can get for free from my Gumroad. It contains a combination of procedural and non-procedural elements. The procedural ones are your most common components, things like your lenses and mirrors. They all have a geometry nodes modifier applied, from which you can access different control parameters. The majority of components needed for today's scene are in the pack, so I recommend you download it to follow along. The only critical thing missing is the digital micromirror device, so we'll model that together. A quick technical disclaimer before starting. For simplicity, I'll be using the photo detectors in the pack as the detection method. However, strictly speaking, this is incorrect, as standard photo detectors aren't capable of single photon detection, which is required in the paper setup. To quickly build up the scene, we'll use the asset browser to drag and drop components in. If you haven't set up the asset browser before, come to Edit, Preferences, File Parts, Find the file path link with the asset browser, or you can create your own now. Make sure that the downloaded uh, asset file, so the components pack, is placed in here. After that, open a new window. Let's change it to the asset browser. I haven't assigned any tags to my components, so they all appear under the unassigned folder. But for good housekeeping, I recommend that you do a, a better job of organizing things. Anyhow, you're now ready to start building your scene. Let's start by sorting out the background, lighting, and camera. Create either a simple plane as the floor, or have one with a backdrop as I have here, and apply a default principle BSDF shader. For the lighting, we'll be using an HDRI. Download Brown Photo Studio 2 uh, from Polyhaven. Open the shader editor, select World Settings, click on the background node, Ctrl T to add an environment texture node and select the HDRI. Set the strength to 0.6. Just like in the original image, let's have light coming in from the right, so rotate the HDRI about the Z axis until you get something similar. I'm also going to add one aerial light, scale it up a bit and let's up the power to something like 70 watts. This softens the shadows a bit from the HDRI. Navigate your view in the 3D viewport so that you're looking diagonally down onto the floor. Once you're happy with the view, come to View, Align View, and Align Active Camera to View to snap the camera to this angle. Come down to the Camera Properties, make sure the focal length is 50mm, Depth of field is disabled, and crank up the passbar 2 to 1. Next, let's start adding components to our scene. For reference, I'll pull open a new window, select the image editor, and open the image from the original figure. Starting with procedural components, like the lenses, beam splitters, and so on. Drag in a planar lens and rename it Nonlinear Crystal. Select the object in the Outliner, 
press M to create a new collection and let's name it Components. Come to the Modifier Properties tab and you'll find a Geometry Nodes modifier where you can customize the lens. Move it around so that it lies along the x-axis. Scale down the radius and increase the thickness and create a higher aspect ratio cylinder. Come to the Material Properties Duplicate the lens material and name it something like nonlinear crystal and change the base color to something non-white, like light green. Come back to the modifier tab, click material and select nonlinear crystal. Now repeat this process to create the filter, lens and half wave plate. I'll fast forward through this process. Once you've done that, add a prism and rename it PBS for Phase Beam Splitter. Adjust the scale and translation so that it sits between the Fourier Transform Lens and Half Wave Plate. Press Shift D to duplicate for our second beam splitter and position that one as well. Now let's add the non-procedural components. Drop in a laser, two photo detectors and a spatial light modulator. Because these components are not procedural and can't be customized, it's just a matter of rescaling, roughly positioning them until you're happy. Uh, we'll need to do some final tidying up at the end so that things are aligned, but that's basically done. We need to model the digital micromirror device. I've pulled up a, an image of a DMD from Texas Instruments as a reference, and we're going to model a simplified version of this. Press Shift A, then Mesh, Cube to add a mesh cube. Scale it down until you have yourself a thin rectangle. Tab into Edit Mode. Ensure Face Selection is enabled. Click the top face, I to inset and scale down the insert face. Press E to extrude and sync the new face into the component. We'll use this as a secondary frame. Repeat the process, inset and extrude one more time to create the mirror part itself. For artistic touch and fidelity, I'll bevel one corner as in the reference image. Make sure edge selection is enabled, click on one of the corners, Control B to bevel, and create a single bevel surface. Come to the shader editor and create three new materials, DMD body, frame, and mirror. For DMD body, I'll use a grey rough metal shader. For the frame, a purple smooth metallic shader. And then for the mirror itself, pull down the metallic and roughness to zero and increase the transmission to one to create a glass-like material. With the DMD model selected in edit mode, come back to face selection mode Press A to select all the faces. In the shader editor, select DMD body and assign. Clear your selection. Select just the faces corresponding to the frame. Come back to the shader editor, select DMD frame and assign. Repeat this process for the window. With the DMD modeled, tab out of edit mode. Scale, translate and rotate it to position it in the optical setup, duplicate and use that as the second DMD. The last two components to add are the beams and optical fibers. The beams are made from curves that are solidified using geometry nodes. For the first bit of the beam between the laser and the nonlinear crystal, make it shorter by tabbing into edit mode, selecting one vertex. G to translate and move it back along the x-axis. Tab out of edit mode and move it into position. For the rest of the beam, use the second beam object. Tab into edit mode again and increase its length. Select both the start and end vertices. Go to segments and subdivide 
to add an extra vertex. Move it to where the first beam splitter is. Press E then Y to extrude the Y axis. Repeat this process to create the rest of the beam. Create a new material in the Material Properties tab and name it to Laser Beam Material 2. Let's give it an orange material. With the beams in place, let's add two optical fibers. Again, these are made from spline curves, so you can change its shape as you want in edit mode by translating and rotating the spline handles. One end has a connector, which will interface with the photo detectors. The other side with the detector head goes near the DMDs. Add more vertices as needed to the spline to control the shape more precisely. If you want to add text labels in 3D, you can just add a text object, change the text in edit mode, under object data properties, increase the extrude to make it 3D, scale the size and give it a new material. And you can use that to create labels for all the different components. And that's basically it. I hope you find this useful, and if you did, please leave a like. If you have any thoughts on what other components would be useful to have, leave a comment down below, and I'll try and include it in the next components pack. Subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye for now.